I got to give a sixth answer. It's Lisa Simpson, who really, and that was in no particular order, by the way, because Lisa Simpson is probably my second favorite. Tell me how you processed your family saying at 18 is the time where you can actually kick off your acting career. I mean, what does that feel like coming from a family that is so articulate and performing in the in mm. everything that they do? How did you deal with that? She's done her homework, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> to say I'm appreciative of both my mother and my father's perspective and making me wait until I was mentally, physically, and emotionally ready for the trials and tribulations of entertainment or Hollywood in general would be an understatement. I feel like asking a child mm. to embody and emulate the emotions and experiences of someone else prior to even knowing who they are personally is a feat. I think most adults uh, have trouble doing that being said, though, I can't say with any sort of uh, assertiveness that I am entirely aware of who I am. I do know what attracted me most to acting uh, as an art form and as a, uh, a vocation is that I can learn different walks of life, different experiences and different lifestyles and embody them and into a character and in a work of art. And hopefully people enjoy it and take something from it. Or maybe not. You know, you take some, uh, you take the good, with the bad, and you hope for the best. But I think the fact that your parents actually had the strength to mm. kind of go, okay, figure out your life first. Don't make this your first passion just because it's a family tradition. Right. right. It's well, it's funny. I I've always loved performing. I was a very obnoxious child. And when it came time to ask that question of pursuing acting or going to college, I remember being told by my father, who was an actor, I don't know if, you know, but he, that. but we're not talking about your dad and we're talking about you. <laughs> that's right. Just how I like it. No, I'm kidding. I love my dad. But <laughs> we do, he, too, but hey, you know, this is a journey. Long as it's mutual. <laughs> but um, he had mentioned, he was like, I don't think it's necessarily lucrative to go to college and study acting when most of acting is human experiences. So I went actually to school for writing and I couldn't be more appreciative of the education I got from the New York University. And to be honest, I'm appreciative for my education in a multitude of ways, but mainly one such that I now feel like I can spot a good piece of literature as well as a good script mm -hmm. and allow my sort of um, look from within and without of the work itself and see where I fit in, see where the statement in the narrative is being made and how I agree with it and then kind of inform how I approach a character, a piece of art. I mean, you just touched on some things there that are really fascinating to hear you kind of break down. Um, is, is it, how do you, um, what, it, what is the, the narrative that you tend to look for when you're looking for that perfect, that perfect piece of art that you want to go after? See, that's a, a beautiful question, which requires an unfortunately convoluted answer. I feel like so long as the work says something, says it boldly and says it eloquently, I'm happy to at least consider in what format the art speaks to me. For example, I love a good think piece on the human condition. I love when we're uh, navigating the psyche of a human being and how tragedy or uh, excitement or positive stimulus affects their way of life. And if you can make a state, a profound statement on that, that maybe hasn't been made before, I love it. Maybe we'll pick up a piece of metal at the end of the year. But I also love a statement to be made on entertainment in general. I love a superhero movie. I love an action flick. I love more than anything, a romantic comedy. And if I could read a script and spot the narrative function of uh, a romance or a action piece that says something about violence or love and the, the tumultuous nature of both, I'm more than happy to consider that as equally as artistically fulfilling as your most Oscar baby uh, indie film. But it's all idealism. I love art that changes and affects people. But tell me if not, listen, I'll do something else. I'll be a contractor or something. Who knows? <laughs> Which you'll probably do really well, too. So <laughs> I, love, I love using my hands. I just probably am not as good at it. <laughs> 
Let's talk about some of the things that you've got coming out. I mean, you've got a really busy program and schedule of stuff going on. So come on, spill the beans. Share with some of the things that are happening right now in your journey. Of course. I mean, first and foremost, we have uh, Scream 5 Cream coming out January 14th, which I couldn't be more excited about. I also can't say another word about it unless I want Paramount to break in my door. Oh, geez. Come on, man. I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the scoop and say it's a movie and I'm in it. And that's about as much as I can say well, my toes. Um, Paramount is lovely. They won't actually cause physical harm. Am I maybe <laughs> legally obligated to say that? No. Um, then following uh, Five Cream in February, we have a movie penned by dear friends and uh, visionaries, uh, Isaac Aptaker and Elizabeth Berger, who also did uh, our show Love, Victor. Yeah. Which, if I, if I keep looking around, it's because I'm in Hawaii with the Love Victor cast, who I love more than anything. But I can gush about them in a moment. Um, uh, it's a movie called I Want You Back, starring Jenny Slate and Charlie Day. And it's uh, incredible. And Jenny Slate, by the way, I did work, I'm going to do a lot of gushing about people I've worked with because I've only been able to work with the most lovely and thoughtful people. Jenny Slate is an artist, a true scholar and a lovely person in general it's both to work with and to talk to i have a great team and i love them so much brett included i don't know if he's still muted but i love him dearly um shortly thereafter see i'm keeping it vague brett don't worry um i have a movie with the two loves of my life cole sprouse and lana condor coming out called moonshot which is great because it's got a very nerdy premise and i'm just a big dork so that uh, that's exciting on two fronts. I get to watch it as a dorky fan and I get to be in it as a dorky fan. Um, and that, oh, I, yeah. And then sometime after that, I did a um, sometime. I'm sorry, these vague time frames are certainly not helpful. I did a movie in Chicago with more loves of my life. Tyler Alvarez, Odessa, Zion, Ariel Winter, Francesca, Noel. And that movie's called Pools. I'm naked the entire time. So if that's something someone's into, they'll get a heaping helping of my naked body. Let's go back to Scream for a moment. I mean, you touched on that. And that's got, I mean, I know you can't say very much about it. Well, well for you, I will push the boundaries. How did the opportunity come to present itself right. to you? Which we I really- just showed up on set and they were like, you want to hot? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you wish. About, I was trying to think. So I met with Radio Silence, Tyler, uh, Tyler Gillette and Matt Van Open, uh, and Chad Villa, who the character's actually named after. A fun fact. Yeah, there you go. There's a little scoop. Pretty sure my character, Chad, was named after one of the producers. Um, I don't know if I've had that confirmed, but that's an exciting anecdote. Uh, I met with them, and to say it was a positive and lovely meeting would be an understatement. We chatted about horror films for two hours, on Zoom. It was in the middle of the pandemic. Not that we're necessarily out of it, but um, we talked all things uh, Scream, all things horror in general, because if you don't know, they're incredibly prolific uh, directors themselves, of Ready or Not, and other incredible movies. And uh, following that interview, I had mentioned that I wrote a paper in college on the potential revitalization of the Scream franchise in a fifth moment i know which is first of all uh, is it though because i'm not a great who knows if i can write an essay very well but um i said i would send it over uh because again i'm a big dork uh about an hour later or so i had it at their email their inboxes stars actually aligned for you you know not just did you write it as an assignment and then now you are in a franchise, which is so- and, uh, look at that for, and it's funny because I've, I've always loved horror movies. I find, uh, the fear, the feeling of being afraid or frightened is such a like visceral emotion to have when in a movie theater. And if I can be a part of any film that truly captures that, such as the legacy of the great late Wes Craven, um, and it's also penned by Kevin Williamson, who's, amazing um 
then that's an honor in and of itself. And again, I don't know if I've upheld the legacy of what it is, but I can tell you I've certainly tried my best. You have hinted uh, that, you know, producing is a space that you want to go into. Um, I, I sense you are worldly wise before your time. <laughs> and a lot of that comes from just, again, good roots. And I, and I can't, I can't. Um, yeah. um, so what, what do you feel you would want to get your teeth into? I mean, have you actually started reading scripts and kind of. Uh, I'll, I'll do you one better. We're producing me. Um, uh, my t- co-producer, Fernando Leora, it's, I mean, we're producing a uh, script that I read during the pandemic, along with my manager, Jake Fleischman, who I love more than anyone, um, about these two high school athletes and the competition that's bred between them naturally through the high school environment and what it means to find success through self-sacrifice and determination. And it'll be myself opposite uh, Theo Palomari and penned by uh, the incredible David Mandel. And uh, we're in the beginning stages of drafting. We have a director, Simon uh, Cash, who's brilliant and has such a distinct vision. Uh, It's now just a matter of getting it off its feet, uh, getting onto its feet, getting it off of its butt and onto its feet. And moving it to a whole nother level. And I couldn't be more excited about it because it's a script I love, a character I'm passionate about, and a subject line that I think is just wildly interesting. I know that one of the things that we did share with your team, that we had a few of your fans, and, and, and I think this is not going to be a hard one for you because from what I see, you talk to your people all the time. I, it's, it's funny. I try to not to, I'm, you, can, you can obviously use whatever rhetoric you would like. I try to refrain from calling people who follow me or people I interact with fans because that implies some sort of implicit hierarchical nature. I do. Don't, don't, don't be so judging of yourself. I think it's a huge, the way I saw it, and this is me as a, a, a writer, a producer in the. Writer, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, perfect. Yes, continue. The space, the space I come from is, is that I see you as a true artist. You know, you're looking at the people that respect your space that I have a lot of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, love for your talent and your art. Um, and the fact that you respond with acknowledging, it's huge. Of course. Well, if you think about it, if they're fans of my art, I'm fans of their time. Right. I'm fans of appreciation that they uh, transfix onto the work that I've done because I could be acting my entire life if no one allows me the space to portray my craft I don't get to do it so at the end of the day Holy. we're fans of each other and if they generate the allowance for me to be able to do what I love I will always generate a space for them to feel make safe you make you a better person make I hope so listen I'm trying to make my mama proud I got a lot hey, of work to do. are you kidding I don't think she's going to worry about that space Thank you so much, New York Moves, both for having me and allowing a beautiful conversation to take place. I think this has allowed me to come into my own as a person a little more so. And I got to thank you, New York Moves, for being you and letting me be me.